If you are here to find out who Thor is in God of War Ragnarok, you are in the right place. Welcome God of War fans, my name is Shane Static, and today we are taking a look at Thor. Who is Thor in God of War Ragnarok? So today we're taking a look at the character arc, we're taking a look at mythology, and we're taking a look at some Amir boat stories. They'll give us a hint into what to expect when Thor meets Kratos in Ragnarok. And please stay till the end to find out what epic battle Thor is going to be a part of. Stay tuned. Right off the bat, I want to talk about Ryan Hurst voicing Thor for God of War Ragnarok. Okay, I was pretty, really, I don't even have words. I was extremely stoked when I heard that Ryan Hurst is going to be voicing Thor for the upcoming God of War Ragnarok. I mean, I have pretty much loved Ryan Hurst in whatever he's in, literally from like uh, Sons of Anarchy, he played Opie, fantastic. Uh, he was in Bates Motel, he was in The Outsiders, Remember the Titans, there's all kinds of stuff that he has played in. He's a phenomenal actor, so I was really, really happy to see that this phenomenal actor has picked up the role of Thor, one of the most anticipated people in the God of War series so far. So, Thor so far is in great hands. So, let's take a look at mythology right quick to understand the backstory of Thor a little bit better. So, this is just going to be right quick. I am not going to expand on mythology too much for Thor. I really want to get into the God of War stuff. So, right off the bat, Odin is obviously Thor's father. But, what's really cool about Thor, that his mother was a giant. In mythology, her name was Jord. I'm hopefully pronouncing that correctly. J-O-R-D. Or possibly with an R at the end. Anyway, but in God of War, it was Fjorgin. Fjorgin. Fjord. Right here. Right here. Anyway, that means that Thor is at least half giant. Well, Odin's like all giant, but he's also god, Aesir. Like, I. But either way, Thor is like ha at least half giant. And he has several offsprings going from Magni. Modi, and he even has a daughter, which Mimir was going to get into, but Kratos interrupted him before he gets too far. So will Thor's daughter be a part of God of War Ragnarok? I think so, especially since Mimir was going to tell us more about her, and Kratos actually cut her off. I'll actually show you the clip right here. Let's see. Thor's their dad, different moms, sordid story that one, Baldur's their uncle, Odin, dear old grandpa, oh, and a sister named- Weapons. How do they fight? So I think she's going to be another part of this grand story that we we're about to see, like all 40 hours worth, and I can't friggin' wait. But I'm not going to linger on the mythology too much. So you are here to learn about Thor in God of War Ragnarok. So let's focus on that. First off, I want to take a look at this character art because I am extremely stoked on this character art. So first impressions... It is pretty much exactly what Mimir has told us the entire time during God of War 2018. Thor is this big, burly, gluttonous guy. He is not the Chris Hemsworth, this guy right, meh, but he is meh. So let's take a little closer look here. So the first thing that I noticed on Thor actually is this. So these are runes in uh, Futhark, which is the Elder Scandinavian uh, rune writings. So, why is this important? I'll tell you this right here. Sony Santa Monica has never put a rune on a character that does not mean something. I actually have a video where I go over basically all of Atreus' tattoo. I'll leave that right here. But, I'm really excited to see what this says. Even Thor's brother Balder had a ton of writing all over him and a lot of it actually explained his story. There's uh, one, I forget where it is, that literally says, I am dead. So this was obvious foreshadowing of what was going to happen in the game. There's a ton of character building on each character, so I'm very excited to see what this actually says on Thor's stomach. So the next thing that I really want to take a look at is actually his scar right over his eye. So I think the scar is from when Thor killed uh, the stone giant. I forget his name right now. But uh, he w they were in the Hall of Odin. And then Odin found this stone giant just walking around. Just like, hey, love this guy. I'm going to bring him home and hang out with him. So that's what he did. And so the stone giant became stupidly drunk. And started to threaten to take home all the Aesir women and stuff. And Thor was having none of it. 
So he basically hit the stone giant so friggin' hard in his head that actually shatters from the stone giant's head was lodged into his own skull. So I'm thinking this scar right here was actually part of the stone giant right here. So that's beautiful character art right there. So the last piece I really want to take a look at really quick is his ring. So take a look at this ring right here. Who has a ring that is very powerful and made of gold? Odin. Odin has a ring called Drapnir. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. So Drapnir was created by uh, the dwarves, which uh, every nine nights, I believe it's nine, it's nine or seven, I think it's nine, uh, it would reproduce itself nine times, or seven, one or the other. So I think this ring right here is Drapnir, and Odin gave it to Thor for some reason, so maybe that reason will present itself in future God of War Ragnarok. So let's continue talking about Thor a little bit. So right quick, I just wanted to bring up Raised Energy by Rep Sports. I am an ambassador for the brand, and to be completely honest, I really do love their stuff, especially their energy drinks, which have zero sugars, zero carbs, zero artificial dyes, and there is absolutely no crash whatsoever. Have you ever had an energy drink and after you're just jittery and still can't focus on what you're doing? Well, my favorite part about Raze is that it does not give you the jitters, but makes you focus and controlled. You have the energy you are looking for and the mental focus that most energy drinks lack pretty hard. Actually, as we speak, I'm actually drinking a Galaxy Burst and it tastes friggin' awesome. And I love all their other products too, like their pre-workout, because I'm getting a little chunky, but that's besides the point. Their Raze on the go if I don't want a carbonated beverage. Their sleep formula, which is awesome because I don't sleep very well pretty much my entire life. And it helps me really get the sleep. So if you'd like to try some for yourself, there's a link in the description to Rep Sports page. But how about save some money as well? At checkout, use my promo code SHANE, S-H-A-Y-N-E, and save 15% off your total purchase. So give Raze a try when you're looking for that kick in your ass, whether you are an athlete, a gamer, or just someone to look to wake up in the morning or get through the rest of your day. Okay, back to the video. So we all know that Brock and Sindri created the legendary Mjolnir. Uh, because after that, they are actually struck with guilt uh, because Thor went on a complete giant killing spree like throughout Midgard, at least Midgard, and basically they're extinct in Midgard. So because of this, we actually get the Leviathan Axe to make up for the unbalance in the world. But will Kratos or Loki get their hands on Mjolnir? It is possible, and it is not the first time that someone else has had their hands on Mjolnir. So in the story that we hear from Mimir, from the uh, giant Thrym, who stole Thor's hammer and brought it back to Jotunheim, the only way Thor would get his hammer back was if Odin would hand over Freya for his bride. So in actual mythology, um, which I like the story a lot better because I think it's hilarious, uh, Thrym was actually stupidly blind. He could barely see anything. So what happened was Thor dressed up in a wedding dress, accompanied by Loki as like a, uh, a ma another maiden, and walked into <laughs> Thrym's castle. And then after a while, like Loki was actually like poking fun at him, and like, "Oh, she's just so happy and excited." <laughs> that was funny. Anyway, <laughs> so after a while, Thor just can't stand it, steals me all near as soon as he gets it, and beats everyone to death. Okay, so in God of War, uh, it's very similar. Only this time, uh, Freya casts a spell on Thor to uh, kind of hide him, a shield his Thorness, and then he killed everybody anyway so one big battle that i am looking forward to is thor versus jormungandr so eventually in god of war ragnarok we will see jormungandr versus thor because that is a huge story in mythology uh, it's actually a huge story in the god of war lore as well so in mythology uh they were supposed to take each other's lives so basically um uh, Thor is going to end uh, Jormungandr, but Jormungandr will poison Thor in the entire world as it is, and then he will die uh, very, very shortly after. But in God of War, 
Thor hits Jormungandr so friggin' hard, he sends him through the splinters in Yggdrasil, the world tree, and sends him into Midgard, where we actually see him in God of War 2018. So, we still have to see Jormungandr being born, for one, and then that epic battle to send him back in time, which I'm super excited to see. I don't know about you guys. But what I am looking forward to the most besides Kratos versus Thor, okay, we're all excited for Kratos versus Thor. That is one of the most anticipated battles in this entire series. I really want to see this as well, but I also really want to see Thor and Odin versus Surt the Brave, the Fire Giant. So in this panel right here, we actually see Thor and Odin versus Surt himself. So we learn from a story from Amir that eventually and during Ragnarok at the walls of Asgard, Surt will fall to Odin and Thor with them fighting and everything. But with one swing of Surt's magical sword that we actually see in Muspelheim, he destroys the world as we know it to make it start anew. I don't know about you, that sounds extremely exciting to me and a great way to wrap up the series. I'm sure it's not going to end right there, but we can look forward to it in God of War Ragnarok for sure. So my favorite theory about Thor right before we go. So my favorite theory about Thor is that Thor is going to kidnap Atreus to become blood brothers with Odin and his adopted brother. I'm going to leave that video right up here for you because I think this is going to happen. It's actually kind of a two-parter. So we have this one uh, and then Loki's Revenge. So check those out if you want to know more about Thor and how Loki, a.k.a. Atreus, is going to play into this. So tell me right here, what is your favorite Thor theory that you have, that you've heard, whatever it might be, and what are you looking forward to most in God of War Ragnarok? For me, I'm really excited to see where Atreus and or Loki is going to go from the boy that we know now into this god of mischief, Loki. I want to see that transformation and where it goes in the story. That's what I'm most excited to see. Um, but what are you most excited to see? Tell me in the comments down below. Let's discuss it. My name is Shane Static. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.